everybody. Um, so I've been receiving many, many questions about uh, the reading response number two that is due tomorrow evening. Questions are great. There's kind of a running theme in some of these that I wanted to address for the class as a whole, because my rule of thumb is if one person has a question, or if one person asks a question, probably three people had that question. So by the time that I've received three or four questions, I'm thinking lots of people are wondering about this. So um, the two questions that are sort of like linked together in a way and that I keep seeing come up over and over again are how long does the reading response need to be and what genre do I really prefer or, or which genre do I really prefer. I, okay, the reading response, the, since, since this is the one that's a retelling of a passage from the Iliad, the reading response needs to be long enough to tell that piece of the story. Um, so, I mean, I'm not looking for a word count, I'm looking for completeness, okay? Um, it needs to work as a unit, right? Like this whole scene, like it logically starts at about the same place that the action starts in the line number from the Iliad that I gave you, and it logically needs to wrap up about somewhere around the place that I ended that passage. If you spill over a little bit, well, in one direction or the other just to kind of set the scene, that's fine. But you're looking for something that tells that little piece of the story comprehensively, but not with like extra stuff added in, right? Like don't go make up extra things to happen. Um, depending on the genre that you choose and how that genre is structured, how the poetics of it work, that might end up in a shorter or longer page count, but it's going to be about the same number of actions. So, for instance, high fantasy is a pretty wordy genre, so is romance. Um, you might have a lot of pages if you've got drawings and images, but not a lot of text. As long as you are still threading in enough narration to tell this piece of the story, that's probably about right. Um, I think that I mentioned, like, the sort of anthropological and linguistic and literary definition of genre in a couple of previous discussions, but I want to call it out here to kind of foreground it for you. Um, genre is a set of co-occurrent formal features that serve as an interpretive frame for the production and reception of discourse, and I'm quoting Richard Bauman there. You have one of his articles on genre and intertextuality in Canvas. I just haven't asked you to read it so that we can you know, work with the terms, because I was like, okay, we're doing a lot with a lot of terms already. So I've talked about genre with you guys in other ways using those same concepts, okay? So like, I've been using this definition of genre all along, and I've been trying to kind of thread it into discussions in such a way that you don't have to read a separate 20-some page article <laughs> in order to, to make sense of it. But if you want a frame of reference, like if you're like, okay, I need, I need actual written words, Dr. Carpenter, it is there for you in files and canvas. So if you think about genre as a cluster of co-occurrent formal features that serves as a, an interpretive frame for the production and reception of discourse, you're looking at those sets of features that when we find them together somewhere out in the wild, we know that, oh, I'm looking at a one of those. So if I find, like if I'm flipping channels on the TV and I see people firing laser guns in space, I suspect I'm probably looking at science fiction. Maybe not, like it could be some kind of fantasy, but often the setting says science fiction. If I am flipping channels and I see wizards in robes with wands doing stuff, I'm going to go ahead and guess that's fantasy. Um, if I pick up a book in the bookstore and the he hero and the heroine are like verbally sparring from the first page, I'm probably looking at some flavor of romance, okay? So you find these clusters of co-occurrent formal features together in an example, and you're like, oh, together these mean I'm looking at one of those. That works in the kinds of texts that we have been looking at, too. The ones that we've seen the most of is epic, because we've had Gilgamesh, uh, the Iliad. I started to say Genesis, Genesis. Genesis is not an epic. Gilgamesh, the Iliad, and the Twin Book Cooley. Okay? So that's how you recognize genres. And what I'm wanting to see is not your mastery of any particular genre. Um, so that, that goes back to the second question that has been coming up a lot, and I think it's related to length because how completely you spell out like small descriptions and stuff, like that varies widely from one genre to another. But 
this question about like, well, which genre is a really good choice? The genre that's a good choice for you is one with which you are sufficiently familiar to deploy it with mastery in telling this selection from the Iliad, okay? So it's probably a smarter choice to choose a genre that you know really well because you will be familiar with that cluster of co-occurrent formal features and better able to use them and then the other piece that we're kind of examining here is, did you get what was going on in that passage? Were you able to retell those events, those actions in some other style, right? Like in your own words, but structured according to the style of whatever genre you've picked. Um, so one way to, to know that somebody has understood material is to ask them to tell it back to you in their own words. Um, and that's a, a very common thing that people do in oral exams, for instance. But in this case, I want to know not just that you, like you understood the actions on the page. I could get that with doing some kind of reading comprehension quiz, right? I also want to know that you are thinking about the ways we tell stories and the ways in which these small formal, these small changes in the poetics and the formal features of a text, um, the way it's presented, how those changes may influence the way the story is received. So the production of the story is going to always involve cluing your audience in to what genre they're looking at. And the reception of the story is going to always involve the audience interpreting those signals and like how well you and your audience or how completely you and your audience share a community of practice has a tremendous impact on whether they understand that interpretive frame in the same way that you meant it, right? If they look at those, that cluster of co-occurrent formal features and understand the same ones to be relevant and important to interpreting the story that you understood them to be when you were drafting it or speaking it or singing it or whatever. Um, so these are like, these are the concepts that I'm hoping to sort of get you thinking about with this assignment. But as far as actually executing the, you know, the assignment so that you have something for me to grade, you want to be complete in narrating what's going on in that passage, regardless of what genre you pick. And then as far as choosing a genre, you want to pick A, something that you are familiar with enough to like write a version of that thing, um, and B, one that has some kind of reasonable relationship to the passage you've chosen. Um, several folks have suggested that romance would fit really well for um, Hephaestus and Chris. I'm going to suggest no, because most romance novels that I've seen start with the hero and the heroine sparring back and forth. They don't immediately get along, right? Like that's, that doesn't happen until near the end of the story. So I think if you were going to do romance, I would pick Achilles and Agamemnon. <laughs> I really would. I would pick like old dog face and the sparring insults. Um, I think that like you could you could make a good play for Agamemnon and Achilles as the hero and heroine of a romance if you wanted to. Um, other options are also on the table. Anyway, I hope that this video helps you to understand a little bit better what I am looking for. And seriously, I think some of the questions that I'm getting are not just what is she looking for, but what does she want? Like, ah, she's so hard. I am a tough grader in some ways. But figuring out what Dr. Carpenter likes or what my favorite genres are, like, that's not, it, it doesn't matter. I like at least some of everything, and I'm not grading you on whether you can guess, like, what I would enjoy reading in my off time, you know? That's not the, <laughs> that might be a fun exercise in and of itself. Um, we, you might come up with some zany answers, but that's not what we're working on today. So, hope this helps. If you have follow-up questions, just let me know. Um, really. I really am looking forward to what folks come up with on this assignment. So talk to you soon.